Parking a big RV can be a real challenge. In today's video, I show you how we park a 21-foot camper van. That would be a Class B RV. Though easier than the big guys, it is still a challenge in some cases and not as easy as the family sedan. Three tips we give you today on how to park a Class B RV. Let's go. Thanks for tuning in today, really appreciate that. My name is Scott, I am your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large, a YouTube channel dedicated to the RV lifestyle. That would be the Class B, the van RV lifestyle in particular. 2017, pretty unhappy with my status quo life. 2018, completely reinvented that, including buying this, a 2019 Winnebago Travato GL 21 foot camper van based on a ProMaster chassis, front wheel drive, gasoline engine, 30 states, 60,000 miles. I've been living full time in my camper van now since February of 2019, and it has been one amazing life changing experience. Here, what we do is we learn together and then we share with you. You decide what's the best way for you to roll in your RV, whether you're researching, whether you're part time, or whether you're full time like me. Full timing is not to be a hero, it is just the way I like to RV. There's so much to see and do in this amazing country, and the people that we meet that I just like to stay in motion. That's why I chose a Class B, easy to move around. Today we're gonna to focus on parking. Uh, these I've learned the hard way to make parking easier in three different ways. All right, the first kind of parking tip I wanna give you is regarding this type of a parking spot. And you see these all over the place. Um, sometimes they're staggered like this, which is pretty cool. Um, here at this park they are, that's why this is gonna demonstrate really well. Um, but sometimes they're not, they're, they're in, 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 in line, in alignment, and so you don't have this staggered situation, uh, but this will really exaggerate um, why this parking tip is going to be exciting for you. I don't know what you call these things specifically, I'm just going to call it a parking stop, because that's what you roll up into and your uh, tires touch that, and that's when you know to stop moving and put the rig into park. So let me show you how we dem I'm going to demonstrate what this is with the rig pulled in normally, and we're going to measure to see how much the rear of the vehicle sticks into the um, lane of travel and then I'm going to show you my tip to show you how much that dramatically shortens uh, and reduces that amount of overhang into the lane of travel. What I'm doing is pulling into the space as one nor would normally do that with the tires touching the front of the parking stop and then we'll measure how far this so that's it. Okay so so I parked like normal. So I parked like normal, the front tires are touching the parking spot, and what I want to show you is how far into the lane of travel the rig is sticking out. So with this being the edge of the road right here, she is actually not in the lane of travel, but it's literally, you know, somebody's gonna be passing a car by here, probably three feet. It's just hanging too close to the traffic for me to be comfortable with this. So what I'd like to do, um, is move the rig so that it goes in further into the parking space. It takes two parking spaces. So again, some of you may not agree with this, but um, I always park a long way from where I'm going to be as a destination. Make sure there's plenty of other spaces around. And uh, let me demonstrate this for you as we um, take up two spaces using this method. All right, so what you have seen is me drive in as I did before, but I carefully put the passenger side front wheel in between the two parking stops, missing this one altogether, and letting the driver's side front wheel catch the parking stop to the, it's to the left of this one. So what that allows me to do, takes two spots, yes I know, uh, we're a little in the grass now, that's okay, um, is that I am significantly not in the lane of traffic. Let me show you that. So checking the same position that we were at earlier, right here in the lane of travel, whereas before the van was literally right here, lane of travel, and a car just came in this way, so they really have to navigate around me. I wanna minimize that. And now the rig is fully um, five feet 
off the lane of travel. So to me, this is a, a best practice I use when there's uh, the space available to do that, to keep the rig, again, separate from everybody else, takes up two spaces, gives Luke a little more place to, to roam about, and um, just gives me more comfort that nothing's gonna hit the van from the backside. So what do you think of that tip? Is that helpful or not? Uh, something you would do? Um, comment below, let me know. And by the way, where are you watching from? Today we're coming at you from uh, Southern Florida, about 12 miles south of uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, which is about 60 miles north of Miami. Um, it's 82 degrees here, February 14, that'd be Valentine's Day, 2021, where most of the country is in the deep freeze and clearly I'm in shorts and sandals. Pretty cool, right? And by the way, you can see from here that I have uh, not managed to be in this spot at all. So there's two additional parking spots here. We can see here how the driver wheel has just caught the, uh, the second parking stop. Okay, next tip. I'm trying to avoid the bicyclists here. So let's pretend this is parallel parking here and you have um, some cars in the middle. What I like to do is either look for a space that's on the end like this, or ideally at the end over here. And this way I can stay in the allotted space and be able to get out with ease. Let me show you that from outside. So again, the deal is to pick a spot at the end of a row of parking, either end, this end or that end, whatever is easiest to get in without uh, annoying the cars um, on that might be parked here with me. What this allows me to do is pull forward just a little bit, taking more of the space up front, leaving plenty of space in the back, right here, so that somebody can park here. I'm only taking up one space and leaving plenty of space so I can actually get my bike off if I want, or uh, somebody can park here without having any issues. So that's my tip on parallel parking. And I will actually drive around, say my destination's here, and I drive around within a couple blocks if I can't find something right close until I find that kind of a scenario because I've learned the hard way that while you can parallel park these vans in between two cars, it is not comfortable and it blocks traffic and it's everybody kind of makes a game out of it. And I don't like that. I just like finding the spot that is going to be easy for me to get my rig into and out of without um, disturbing anybody or creating any harm to my van. So what do you think about that tip? Was that helpful at all? If so, give it a thumb up. Sure appreciate that. Comment below. What kind of parking tips do you have? Where are you watching from? What's the temperature in your location today, February 14, 2021? Is uh, when this has been recorded. 82 degrees here in Florida. Lovely. And uh, again, consider subscribing to the channel. It would be an honor to have you part of the success of our channel. Tip number three, let's go. So what I like to do when I come into a shopping area like this is kind of scout the lot quickly, find a place a long way from my destination. And what I'd like to do is find two tandem, that would be in a line, spots like this in the shade, being extra careful to look at the clearance of the trees and I take two spaces, just like this. Nice. So while I am taking two spots, there's plenty of parking around, so I'm not hurting anybody that way. I'm in the shade, under a tree. Be very careful of clearance, super important in parking lots because they typically don't trim these trees very well. Um, taking two spots in tandem. Plenty of a chance of somebody parking here is probably zero today so I can load my groceries very easily. If I'm staying for a while I would actually pivot the rig or find another place um, that I can have the patio slider open so Luke can get out and not be in danger of getting hit by a car. That's zooming by. But this is the way I like to park in a parking scenario like this. Two tandem spaces, taking two, away from the buildings, in the shade. So here's the bonus tip for cabin temperature control. 
it's very important not to place your cab into the sunlight because having sunlight flood the cab becomes like a greenhouse and it heats up the interior significantly, certainly the first third of the van by at least 10 to 20 degrees. Not kidding on that. We're going to run an experiment one day on that. So what I like to do is put the van cab out of the sunlight, the back of the van into the sun if necessary because it's got blacked out windows. I can even black the, block the windows out entirely and so there's no glass absorbing that sunlight uh, coming through. So this is the best practice for cabin temperature control is to point your uh, cab out of the sunlight and you'll have a significantly better air conditioning experience because the air conditioner can actually keep up with the temperature of the vehicle on the inside because the cab is not filled with sunlight and heat. Yes. Hot tip. So I hope you enjoyed that video today. I had a blast making it. It's been on my mind for a little while and we don't talk about parking enough in my opinion. Um, while parking a class B RV van is way easier than a traditional RV, there's still some uh, things you'll want to be aware of and we gave you three tips today. Parallel parking, tandem parking like this, and then using a parking stop to your benefit to stay out of lane of travel. And the bonus was to keep the cab out of the sunlight to keep temperature management more feasible uh, inside. So with that, we say thank you for watching. Please comment below where you're watching from. These tips helpful for you at all? Give it a thumb up if you got anything out of this. And uh, subscribe to the channel, please. It would be an honor to have you part of our success here on Go Small Live Large. Check out my website, uh, gosmalllivelarge.com, and you'll find a, find a bunch of information there that uh, you won't find on YouTube. And uh, we got events coming up and other things like that. So until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on. So this would be an example of parking stops and alignment. And I'll show you this same deal. I'm actually going to use the passenger side as the parking stop and put the driver's wheel in between. Just until it stops like that. Let me jump out and show you that. So again, the driver's wheel misses this parking spot, stop, and the passenger side front wheel just catches it. I do take two spots, but you can see that I'm actually in the lanes by doing this. If I parked normal, that would stick out probably about to here. Still okay, but I would be in the lane of travel. And I don't want to do that. So I'll give you an example of what that looks like from when the uh, parking stops are in a line. Kind of a cool tip, right? I just don't want my rig being in the lane of travel. That's the big thing for me.